Hello, <clears throat> my name is Joachim Suter. I'm a LANA certified lymphedema therapist and the founder of the Academy of Lymphatic Studies. And today I would like to talk to you about the incidence and prevalence of secondary lymphedema. There are different types of lymphedema. Depending on the etiology, lymphedema can be classified as either primary or secondary. More common than the primary type is secondary lymphedema. Secondary lymphedema results from a mechanical disruption or obstruction of normally functioning lymph vessels or lymph nodes and may present in the extremities, the abdomen, the trunk, the head and neck area or the exterior genitalia. As far as incidence is concerned, worldwide 140 to 250 million cases of secondary lymphedema are estimated to exist with lymphatic filariasis, a parasitic infestation of the lymphatic system being the most common form. Filariasis is a tropical disease which is endemic in more than 80 countries in Africa, India, Southeast Asia and South America, as well as uh, the Pacific Islands and the Caribbean. So lymphatic filariasis is not a common cause for secondary lymphedema in the United States. In the United States, the highest incidence of secondary lymphedema is observed following surgery and radiation for malignancies. The overall cancer treatment related incidence rate of secondary lymphedema is about 15%. However, the breast cancer treatment related lymphedema incidence has a much higher rate of occurrence with 42%. Generally, it can be said that one out of eight women in the United States will develop breast cancer during the course of their lives. The 2017 statistics on breast cancer from the American Cancer Society indicates that almost 255,000 new cases of breast cancer in females and 2,200 in males were diagnosed in the United States that year. So what is the reason for lymphedema to develop secondary to cancer treatment? Any type of surgery, specifically uh, procedures that require the removal of lymph nodes, can cause the onset of lymphedema. Surgical breast cancer procedures such as lumpectomies or mastectomies commonly include the removal uh, or dissection of lymph nodes with subsequent damage to lymph vessels. Many individuals uh, receive radiation therapy following the surgical procedure, which may aggravate the situation even further. The goal of these procedures, of course, is to eliminate the cancer cells and uh, to save the patient's life. However, a side effect of uh, lymph node removal is the disruption in the transport of lymphatic fluid. Let me tell you a little bit about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system consists of lymph vessels and lymph nodes throughout the body. Lymph vessels collect lymph fluid, which is composed of protein, water, fats and uh, waste products from cells. These uh, lymph vessels transport the fluid to uh, lymph nodes where waste products and foreign materials are filtered out from the fluid. After passing several groups of lymph nodes, the lymph vessels return the lymph fluid back to the blood. When these lymph vessels are damaged, the flow of lymph is compromised. Now, if the remaining lymph vessels then, uh, that are unaffected by the surgery are not able to compensate for the damaged lymph vessels, lymphatic fluid accumulates in the tissues. The, this uh, accumulation of lymphatic fluid results in an abnormal swelling, most commonly affecting the upper and lower extremities. However, as I said before, other parts of the body may be affected as well. This, this swelling is uh, labeled secondary lymphedema. Secondary cases of lymphedema uh, may occur immediately following the surgical procedure within a few months, a couple of years or 20 years or even more 
after treatment. The average time of onset is between 14 and 24 months post-surgically uh, post -surgically, uh, with an increased number of cases over time. Some individuals may never experience any symptoms. However, the risk of development of secondary lymphedema lasts a lifetime. What are the effects of secondary lymphedema? If lymphedema is left untreated or poorly treated, lymphedema can become more severe and lead to significant physical, psych uh, psychological and uh, social problems. Infections or cellulitis in the affected body part are common and may lead uh, to frequent hospitalizations. As lymphedema progresses, the uh, affected body parts may develop hardening, which is known as uh, lymphostatic uh, fibrosis. There may be additional deposits of fatty tissues, skin changes such as papillomas, warts, or even open uh, wounds, and frequent infections. In many cases, specifically if no treatment is initiated, lymphedema can lead to an extreme enlargement of the affected body part which is known as lymphostatic elephantiasis. There is currently no cure for lymphedema. However, its symptoms and progression may be mitigated by appropriate management. Proper treatment has been shown to reduce the symptoms associated with lymphedema, reduce the incidence of hospitalizations for complications, as well as to reduce the number of physician and therapy visits. The goal of any treatment is to reduce the swelling and to maintain the reduction, that is to bring the lymphedema back to a normal or near normal size, so the affected individuals can continue with their activities of daily living. Another goal, of course, is to limit the risk of infections. In order to reduce the swelling, it is necessary to reroute the lymph flow to include water and protein molecules around the blocked or damaged areas into more centrally located healthy lymph vessels. This goal is achieved by a combination of different treatment modalities, all of which are components of a treatment system, which is known as complete decongestive therapy or CDT. The components of CDT include manual lymph drainage or MLD, compression therapy, decongestive and breathing exercises, and skin and nail care. If CDT is applied correctly by a skilled and certified lymphedema therapist, it shows excellent long-term results in both primary and secondary lymphedema. You can find out more about secondary lymphedema on Lymphedema blog which is a website dedicated to provide free and up-to-date information to individuals affected by lymphedema, lipedema, and uh, swellings of other origin. Just log on to www.lymphedemablog.com and click on any article that may be of interest to you on the index, which is on the left side of the website.